Hello, my name is Alex Holloway, and I did rounded segments in worms. Um, the phylum for round worms is Nematoda, and the phylum for segmented worms is Analyta. Uh, round worms are the most numerous of all species. They have about 15,000 different species known. Um, they can go from microscopic to about a meter in length, and there is actually estimated to be up to a million different species in total existence today which means that many species are not found, but their estimations, uh, scientific estimations, determine that there's about a million that are out there. Um, roundworms usually live in the sediment, um, but they can live in all different parts of the water column, up from the surface to suspended and also in sediment. Uh, they feed off organic matter and sea floor, um, which usually can be leaves, dead animals, anything like that. Uh, the, ba the body of a roundworm is um, basically the same as an earthworm. It has a pseudocolon, a body cavity where all its organs are, and it has a skin that covers the outside. Um, and the skin is an epidermis, and it's exactly like an earthworm. Um, roundworms can be earthworms, but in terms of this, we're talking about marine worms. Um, the nervous system of a roundworm is the certain nerve rings in the head of their body that um, run from the top of the head to the reproductive and digestive organs. Um, certain things they can sense is light, they can sense movement in the ground, they can also control their muscles with those nerve rings. Um, in terms of reproduction for a roundworm, um, most roundworms use sexual reproduction, but some are hermaphroditic. Um, this means that there are two different genders in a roundworm, and they sexually reproduce by rubbing themselves together, and they, um, a male can fertilize a female egg. And roundworms can lay up to 20 million eggs at a time, which means that they're laying a lot of eggs to increase their chances. And um, generally speaking, most of the eggs do not fertilize, and that is the point of Here's a photo of a um, both male and female roundworm. Uh, you can see the size and the different um, sexual organs, um, testes, ovaries. Um, they've got the same type of in intestines, an excretory system, uh, nerve rings in the top. They have a pharynx where they bring in food, um, and the food travels through the body all the way down. Okay, on to segmented worms, which is the phylum Analyta. There's about 22,000 different species today. Um, they're one of the most common phylums, along with round worms. Um, and I'll, I'm going to show you two examples of common segmented worms, and they're pretty famous, actually. There's leeches and two worms. Um, leeches, which are one of the most famous um, worms, um, they live in shallow fresh water, and they actually live, there's a lot Northeast, Northern America. Um, and they usually live in ponds or slow moving streams, and they like slow moving, shallow water where they can attach to rocks, and certain things like that. Um, the way leeches feed is that they use three sharp blades that cut into an host, and they attach themselves while feeding. An adaptation of leeches is that they have extremely strong anticoagulants that provide a constant blood flow for bleeding. They're also painless and generally hard to detect, which is why they're so um, good at what they do, so to speak. Um, in terms of reproduction for leeches, they're hermaphroditic, which means that they do not need another leech to reproduce. They can reproduce on their own, and that's called reciprocal fertilization, which this actually helps them reproduce better. Um, if there are no other leeches around, it's easier for them to reproduce. Okay, uh, tube worm is found in the intertidal pelagic zones. And a um, great fact about the tube worms is that they use a symbiotic relationship with bacteria in their body, which means that these bacteria um, break down the food that they bring in, and that breaking down of food into um, simpler compounds is what allows the tube worm to uh, use that energy and to grow. So without this bacteria, these tube worms can't survive. They do not have their own digestive tracts, and so they need this relationship between bacteria, and it uh, seems to work out very well.
and they can also reach up to seven feet in length, so they can generally get pretty big. Here's a photo of a tube worm. Um, they're usually found very deep in water. They're also found near hydrothermal vents, which is one of their adaptations. They're very resistant to heat, which is one of um, the ways they survive. In terms of reproduction for a tube worm, they reproduce using sexual reproduction and excretion of sperm and egg into the surrounding water. So they, um, there are different genders of tube worm, and they are not hermaphroditic. Morning, everyone. I did giant tube worms and arrow worms as my part of the project. Um, giant tube worms are found in great depths of the ocean floor. Um, these worms are found off of deep sea vent communities, so they've been tricky to discover. This map here shows some of the known locations of um, giant tube worms along with vent communities. It's similar to one that we looked at in the fall. Um, giant tube worms can grow up to five feet long. Um, because these worms are found so deep in the ocean and it's hard to do research, um, there's very few things known about them. Um, scientists believe that shrimp and deep sea crabs feed on the tops of the worm where this plume is. Um, the lifespan of these worms are based off the vent communities so it's not known how long they can actually live. Um, these worms do not have a mouth after they um, mature to adulthood and they feed through a process known as clemsysis. Um, this process is when they use the hydrogen sulfide taken from the deep sea vent, the deep sea vents, and turn it into sugar. Um, these worms have two hundred and eighty-five billion bacteria per ounce of tissue in their body that they use to create this sugar. Um, reproduction for these worms is the females will release their eggs into the water. And the males will release their sperm, and when fertilization occurs, a larva is formed, and they will settle in the rocks by the vents. Okay, so the other worm that I did was the arrow worm, and this phylum of worms are actually greatly involved with plankton. These are from anywhere from two to one hundred and twenty millimeters long. Um, there are one hundred and fifty. 120 different species of arrowworms known today. Arrowworms can create light. A uh, little fun fact. Arrowworms can create light to distract predators. Um, location. They're found everywhere, basically. Um, from Antarctica to Greenland, um, any depth of the water. Um, they have little fins that they can move with, but they're mostly just moved around by tide and current, just like other plankton. Um, reproduction for these worms, they can create birth, sperm, and eggs, but reproduction is sexual. They also, like giant tube worms, they release their eggs and sperm into the water. And when fertilization occurs, they attach to algae, and then that's where the, um, that's where they grow. Um, so just for arrowworms, um, they eat copepods, small crustaceans, larvae fish, and actually other kinds of arrowworms. And then they'll be eaten by anything from certain seabirds or just small to medium-sized fish or squids.